My name is Fred Shore. Um, uh, my wife has suffered from cancer three times in her life. She had breast cancer 10 years ago. Three and a half years ago, she got diagnosed with a colon cancer. And a year and a half after that, it was again colon cancer. So she's a three-time survivor. I lost a daughter uh, six years ago to colon cancer. I can't count the number of friends I've lost. My brother passed on from cancer. So it's like, it's been a, a thing in my life for a long time. Lucy and I have been together for a long time and about 10 years, 12 years ago. She came home, she'd been to see a doctor and the diagnosis was breast cancer. So holy moly, you know I mean? <laughs> Suddenly it just changes your whole world. My savior. Uh, <laughs> and it was pretty, pretty terrifying. I found it like suddenly, I felt like it was about as useful as uh, the third wheel on a two-wheel chariot, because there really is not much technically you know, that you can get involved in. You're not going to take the chemo or the operation or the... You suddenly have to, to do things like uh, keep an eye out for what she's doing, if she needs something or something like that. It was tough. I mean, it was, you know, suddenly your, your, your partner and the person close to you is like, in danger of dying, you know, I mean, that's the bottom line on it. So we managed to get through it, but I gotta be honest, it was a tough thing. I found it really stressful in that it kept me awake at night and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I felt kind of helpless, you know, and I don't like feeling helpless, never have. I didn't want to talk to her about what I was feeling like, because I figured she had enough on her plate at the time. I was lucky in another respect that some of the people at work were uh, really supportive. So in this one particular place where I was working in St. Paul's College, two of the staff members came up to me the day they found out Lucy had cancer. They gave me a big hug and one of them was a survivor and we, we talked about it. It was good, you know, to let it out. And I'm the kind of person that likes to talk about things. So, But I didn't want to talk to it with Lucy because I figured the stress levels she was under were high enough. So I had other people. The reality of the matter is though there's still times when you, you know, you get ticked off at the world in general because you why did it have to happen now? Uh, you know, what can we do about it? Nothing. And you get frustrated and angry and stuff. And those kind of things you just have to kind of eat. Um, they'll drive you nuts if you let them get to you. When, she went, when we went through the, uh, the breast cancer, we first found out about it. We did a, a I got a couple of Aboriginal elders in to do a sharing circle right here in this room. And that was really something really well. We also hosted a couple of other sharing circles with other people who had cancer. Lucy also talked to the social workers and stuff. Very, very good relationships with the doctors. A lot of that I think comes from the fact that if you show the signs that you're interested in knowing what they will share with you, you know. If you don't, they just do what they have to do and don't tell you anything. So, And that's difficult because I know a lot of Aboriginal people just won't ask questions, you know. Yeah. They figure it's not their right to do that. Knowledge is a dangerous thing, but it's also highly useful. There comes a point when you're a little too much, you know, oh, don't do that, I'll do that. Just don't, don't carry that, I'll carry it. Don't do this, go lie down, you're tired now, that kind of thing. After a while, it just causes the frustration level in the person that's getting helped, if you will, to go up. And I didn't realize that, you know. So when she said, look, leave, you know, don't, take it easy, I'm all right. Ooh. So I kind of felt a little upset, you know, she was not willing to, to have me help her all the time. But then I realized that, yeah, you know, I guess it could get to be a bit much. So it's called smothering. And it's a natural habit. I went and checked it thing up on the computer and looked it up, got a pamphlet on. Oh, yes, it's true. Apparently you can really overdo this to the point where the person gets so angry at you for doing this that it negates anything you are doing. That's good. So. Learn how to back off, you know. What happened basically is really came as a big surprise. Our oldest daughter got was not feeling well in the summertime, July and August. It just fluish type you know, symptoms and things, and she was getting really tired. And she was also at a position where she was just about to become an assistant manager in a big store here in the city, and she thought that was the stress of that and everything else like that. So anyway. She started at the new place, but then she found herself going to work and sitting in the office, unable to get up and do anything, or just no more energy left, really not feeling well. So her mother and I both 
started getting a little pushy about getting something, you know, see a doctor about it. So eventually she did. And um, the surgeon put her in the hospital that, that same day. And not only put her in the hospital, but had her on morphine before the hour was out. And she was diagnosed with uh, stage four colon cancer. In, there were three major tumors and all of them had really, they, they had metastasized everywhere. It was in her liver and everything. So that was September 25th and she died on November 12th. And that was tough. You know, to, as a parent watching a child dying is not fun. Um, there was nothing we could do. I mean, the only thing we could do is make her as comfortable as possible and uh, by and large just have to tough it up. We had a lot of friends that were there and there was nothing, didn't have time to get angry, it just, it happened so damn fast. And um, the reality of the matter was one day she was dead, you know, and that was it. And she died on, on November 12th. November 11th is my wife's birthday. And we always said she waited until after, you know, midnight. Knowing Melinda, she probably did. Melinda's friends showed up from different parts of the country and stayed as long as they could. And they were all actually present when Melinda passed. And um, that kind of a collectivity thing really worked well. Like I said, our families were small, but we're close. I, I come from well, a little bit of dysfunction in my family background and stuff. So this one here is not perfect, but you know, we tend to, uh, we, we watch each other's backs very carefully. And um, yeah, that, that we were the best source of, of of help was our family. And that's a very Aboriginal thing too, you know, because you very often look around and someone's sick, they're in the hospital, there's 30 people in the room and it drives the nurses and doctors nuts because the visiting rules say two only, you know. Well, no, that in the Aboriginal people, if someone's sick, we all got to be there to, you know, help them out and stuff like that. And it works, it drives the doctors nuts, but, uh, you know, that's what happens. One of the things, too, that we are really, really conscious of is getting the push to get the testing done. So we've been blunt about it. It's embarrassing, I suppose, you know, the whole concept behind it. I've gotten to the point now where I, I'm blunt about what it is, you know. So someone asked me what it is, I said, well, it's a plastic tube about four feet long, five feet long, and they put it up where the sun doesn't shine, you know. <gasps> oh, I'm not going anywhere near you, so on, so on. But, once, you know, once, if people talk about it and get to know about it, it eventually removes the mystery from around it, you know? And like mammograms, I, I happen to know what a mammogram's about because I went and looked it up and found out about it. But I bet you there aren't too many guys that do. Or young men finding out the, the, what the basic test is for prostate. You know, you're going to do what? Uh, that kind of thing. So it's, you know, the young fellow goes in for his first overall physical and they want to check his prostate. Well... They, they, a lot of guys look upon that as really, really embarrassing. And it's stupid. You're going to die from embarrassment. That's what it boils down to. So I can be pretty blunt about it when I get out there. And, you know, yeah. If someone asks me, I'll tell them. I'm not a big tattoo fan, but I got this one. It's um, a Gerber daisy. That's Melinda's favorite flower. The pink can is for pink is for breast cancer. The dark blue one is for colon cancer. So I figured if I got this, people would be, you know, wow, that's amazing, Fred, you got a tattoo. And I could say, yes, it is. Uh, my wife had colon ca uh, breast cancer. Uh, my daughter had colon cancer and died from it. Get yourself checked. So it was like a kind of a teaching thing. You know, people would see it and then ask the question. Lucy's is up here on her shoulder. And it works. Every now and then someone asks me and I tell them, you know, get, go and get yourself tested. It's now part of our daily life, you know, we just accept that it's there. I don't want it to do any more damage to us, so that really don't, you know. But that's always in the back of the head that it could, you know. And I refuse to get to spend all my time worrying about that factor. If it's going to, it's going to, you know, and then we'll deal with it. Um, but again, I, the last thing I want to see happen is one of my grandchildren suddenly gets something serious and it can happen and there's all different kinds of childhood cancers that could come up and that I think would be horrible but again what are you going to do about it you spend all your life worrying about it or deal with it when you can take those steps you can to avoid having you know to suffer through it so colonoscopies and rectal exams and all those other wonderful things mammograms and stuff you know 
and do what you can, you know. But at the same time, life goes on, you know.